In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Visconti Rembrandt fountain pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, it really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. This is a Visconti Rembrandt fountain pen. I have it here in green, and this is one of the more entry-level Visconti pens. We have a steel nib, a little bit smaller body than a typical Visconti, but still a very nice pen, and I actually think it's pretty well made. We have a green acrylic resin body, and you kind of get these swirls in here. It's nice. It's kind of got a maybe a little bit of a metallic-y look to it. I wouldn't say that the body material is a wow. I think it was the second Visconti I ever had was the original first generation Van Gogh, which was a little bit bigger of a pen than this, but it was sort of a white swirled resin. It was oh, just a gorgeous pen. This was a little bit more lackluster looking to me when I got it, unfortunately. But it's still a pretty cool pen, and I do think it's pretty well made. So just looking at the cap here, we have the typical Visconti style curved clip here which is supposed to look like the Ponte Vecchio in Florence where Visconti is from. I guess it's a distinctive clip. I don't personally like the look of these clips uh, design wise but you know when you see a clip like this you know it's a Visconti so in that sense it's nice. Now looking at the clip here we can see it says Visconti on both sides and it's filled in with like a black I don't know what lacquer or something. If you look at the edges, it's not the cleanest. It kind of looks a bit fuzzy on the, the ends there. You don't really notice that in person. I'm just looking at it super closely, so I don't think that would bother anyone, but I noticed it. Up at the top here, we have a finial with a V for Visconti here in silver. And, oh, I forgot to mention, this is a spring-loaded cap. Uh, clip and you can kind of see the connection point underneath that finial and then looking at the cap ring here We have two little rings here, and then we have sort of like a machine finish looks pretty good Made in Italy in the back and then Visconti on the front there and then at the end of the pen We just have a little silver dot at the end. I think it looks good It's a nice nice touch to that and then it's a magnetic closure and I've had this pen for maybe a month now, and it still trips me up, this magnetic closure. I'm just not used to it. I don't know why I always want to twist this pen. Anyway, I don't think that'll be a problem for most people. It's just a problem for me. <laughs> we have a silver chrome kind of grip section here. And then interestingly, this like very flat ring at the end, just a good useful place to know where you can feel not to grip down any further, but definitely different design. So taking off the cap, then we have a number five Bach nib, I believe. More basic design here. Notice there's no breather hole, just a slit on the nib there. And then we have sort of a interesting kind of geometric pattern. It says Visconti and M, plastic feed. This is a comparison. This is a Kaveco Sport. So it's maybe a touch bigger than that. I thought this was a number five Bach nib. I got to check on, on that, but I think they're both number five Bach nibs. But notice how there is a little bit of a different shape to the Visconti one. I don't think I have another nib that's exactly this shape and size. Now, unscrewing it... This pen did not come with a converter. It did come with a cartridge, not this one. This is a Caran d'Ache Idyllic Blue. But no converter included in this. Metal threading here, metal threading in the body. It's not a super heavy pen. I wouldn't call it light, but not super heavy. Just the overall shape of the pen, pretty straight all the way through here, tapered down at the end, but otherwise, I don't think there's really any taper on the pen here. It's, I don't know, I go back and forth. I feel like the, a lot of the details on this pen are quite nice, but the overall look of the pen, I'm not sure I really like it. Okay, let's do some measurements. And again, I'm sorry for doing it this way, but, ooh, we got some magnetic. So roughly uh, 14 centimeters, and then uncapped, I'll use this non-magnetic thing. Uh, about 122, 123 millimeters. I'd say 159, thereabout. As a comparison, this is a Pilot Vanishing Point. Roughly the same length, maybe the Vanishing Point slightly longer. You know, just so you can see the size. It's a, it's a full-size pen. I think with modern pens, we get used to very large ones, but this is definitely a, a full-size pen. So we do have a, a taper here. 
So I'll go to right below that metal ring, 10, and then right at the end of the grip section here, 11.4. It's a good size grip section. I've found this pen to be very comfortable to write with. It's not a particularly heavy pen, even though we do have a decent amount of metal parts in it. 31.21 grams, and this is with a full convert cartridge in there. I just put in another new one in. 18.56. It's a nice, very comfortable weight. In terms of balance, I don't find this pen to be particularly top heavy. Very comfortable overall. We do have a smaller nib, but you know, you have a pretty big grip section. I even find, you know, gripping it all the way back here it doesn't really seem to, to bug me. So you have a lot of places I feel like you can, you can grip this big area and where it's comfortable to hold the pen. Okay, let's do the writing sample. I'm going to be doing the writing sample on this Paper Mind Mitsubishi Bank Paper notebook. This is a company that I created and I love Mitsubishi Bank Paper and I couldn't find one on the market. So made my own. For Blake's broadcasts, viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. Open here. And I am using every page because <laughs> this is precious paper and I don't want to waste any of it. Okay, so this is a Visconti Rembrandt and this is a medium nib and this is Karen Dash Idyllic Blue. It's a very smooth nib. It's a very wet nib. It's really excellent to write with, in, in my opinion. Now let's try fast writing. Yeah, no, no issues. Um, number five nib. Very good performance. Now I have not had a lot of these. However. Out of the steel nib Visconti pens that I've had, I think I've had a much better success rate than with their gold nibs. I don't know why that is, but I can't actually think of a steel nib Visconti that I had that was bad. The very first Visconti I ever had was a Percoles, which had probably the smoothest medium nib I think I've ever had. I really regret selling that pen, but it was, it was a very top heavy pen, especially when posted. Anyway, very nice performance here. In terms of reverse writing, mm, I, it's pretty faint, barely. It's actually not too scratchy, and you do get a noticeably thinner line. So I'm going to say it can do it, and it's relatively smooth. Now in terms of flexibility, There's a little bit of variation there, but again, not a flex nib, probably not a good idea to push on it too much. So what are my pros and cons for the Visconti Rembrandt fountain pen? Well, the biggest pro for me is definitely the build quality. I think they put a lot of nice, interesting details into this pen. I like the magnetic cap closure, even though I'm still a month later getting used to it. <laughs> I like that we have this nice spring-loaded clip. I like cap ring, this low but this relief is really, I think, nice looking. I like that we have this Visconti or V finial. It's just, there's a lot of nice details in this pen. I like the big comfortable grip section that we have here and it has a very smooth, very wet, medium Bach number no. five nib. So I do think build quality is really nice here. Now, in terms of cons, the biggest con for me is probably going to be the price. I think this comes in just under $200, and that's a lot for a steel nib pen. You can get entry-level gold nib pens from Japanese manufacturers. You get a Pilot Vanishing Point, which is one of my favorite pens. It just sort of depends on how much you really value a gold nib or not. But I do think this is kind of on the, the pricey side. The other thing, looks-wise, I don't know if this is my favorite looking pen. I like all the nice details. But when they come together, I don't know, it doesn't work that well for me. Visually though, it certainly is, I think, more interesting than, you know, like a Pilot Custom 74 or a Platinum 3776, which are both great pens, but, you know, this has got some more Italian flair to it, we'll say. I did get this for 
$85 on sale. At that price, this is a pretty nice pen. I thought it was compelling enough to, to buy it, and I am happy that I did at that price. But $200, I don't think I would recommend it at that price. Other cons, you don't get a converter with this. It is standard cartridge converter. It does come with one cartridge. That's pretty much it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen, paper, and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.